Yo, what's up guys? So in this video, I wanted to talk about what I've been up to over the past 10 years. Basically how I started, what kind of projects did I work on, what kind of companies did I work with, what kind of roles did I dive into? Because I know a lot of you out there are probably wondering, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Why is he all of a sudden making filmmaking content? Why should I listen to him? There's so many other filmmaking channels out there. Will I actually learn anything? Will I relate to this guy? And that's what I'm here for. So when I started, you know, we basically were just doing anything and everything we could. Doing a lot of music videos, a lot of small local businesses, a lot of situations that allowed us to make mistakes and learn from it. And it wasn't until our first major short film experience for Canon, um, they had a contest called Project Imagination and Ron Howard was the, the lead uh, creative on it. And he kind of like put everything together and, and came up with the idea, I would guess. I'm not exactly sure, but his daughter was also involved and a bunch of other celebrities like Jamie Foxx and Biz Stone and Eva Longoria. And they also made films. And we ended up coming in the top 20 and we got invited to the event and it was in New York. And I'll never forget it. That was the first time where I was like, holy shit. Like we did, we did something really crazy. Like we went from nothing to something. We knew nothing about writing. We knew nothing about creating a film and we learned and we just, and we're here. And that's when I knew I was like, this is what I want to do. This is, this is incredible. So there was another contest I saw um, from Nokia and they were working with Sundance Festival and they wanted you to create a trailer um, based on music in your hometown or, or whatever. Like you were pretty open to it. So, you know, I had some footage from music videos and I went out and shot a bunch of B-roll and I put together this cool trailer and I ended up getting fourth place international. And I didn't even know at first. And I was like, you know, months later, I got this email and it told me that uh, I was invited to Sundance Festival. Now, you know, I was flat broke at the time, so I obviously couldn't afford to go, but um, it was just humbling to be able to get top five, you know, in the whole world. Like, that, that's another thing. I was like, holy shit, I'm here, I'm doing it. Uh, I was getting on many sets, I was working with RCA Records, you know, just from meeting people, um, working, just getting out there, shaking hands. Um, they seen that I was hungry and, you know, I'd get uh, put in different roles that I wasn't even sure how to do, but I would read days ahead and, on how to do them roles and I would get in there. And then just from grinding and grinding, we ended up getting in touch with someone who worked at Reebok and uh, we started doing work with them, you know, smaller work, events and whatnot, and 24-hour um, edits, you know, flying out to different states, working with celebrities, major basketball legends, Shaquille O'Neal, Dominique Wilkins, Sean Kemp, you name it. I mean, we got to meet and work with all these people. Really cool experience. So, you know, besides doing all the corporate stuff, I still wanted to create films. I wanted to be a filmmaker. So I started just learning um, writing and, and just the techniques and the structure and, you know, directing and um, trying to get more out of that, like, uh, technical side because I'm a very technical person but I wanted to be more hands-on um, with actors and tell more of a story and be more of the leader so I needed to basically shift that attention away from being a DP because that's basically what I would say I was for many years um, it all stemmed from photography you know just just picking up a camera but I wanted to do more I wanted to create from the ground up so uh, the short film blame was my first venture into that and we had a modest budget. We had some investors um, who reached out. It took us three weekends to shoot it. It ended up being way too long, 24 minutes. Um, it was a very personal story. It was based on my life. And overall, I think it came out really well. Um, performances and direction and whatnot, but the, the writing was the weakness of it and it just taught me so much. I mean, that short film was really eye-opening, but it was just overly ambitious because at the time I was not ready to take on something like that. But I did it anyway, and you know, the amount of knowledge we gained from that experience is just priceless. But, you know, we tried putting in festivals and whatnot, and it just didn't get in, and now I understand why. We also had the pleasure of working with T.D. Jakes and his business, and um, it was just very inspirational, and, and uh, being a part of something so selfless, and being able to tell people stories, and just seeing it on a Globetron at a stadium um, and how many lives we've impacted, you know, telling these stories and how inspirational they were. Um, you know, three young girls who have struggled with different aspects in their life, bullying and, and neglect and depression and, you know, being able to tell those stories and, um, you know, see the impact of people when they watch it was just, was just eye-opening and that was probably one of my favorite moments um, in my filmmaking career is just looking around at the crowd and just seeing 
how everyone's reacting to it, you know? It was just incredible, and I'll never forget that. Uh, working with record labels like Equal Vision Records, uh, you know, directed a music video for Owl, it came out really good. The singer, Jay, uh, he had this idea, and, and I really helped bring it to life, and I was glad to be a part of that. Uh, Northern Faces, uh, directed a video for them. You know, pretty basic idea, but really came to life with the cinematography. And you know, going from Reebok, um, one of the reps went from Reebok to Puma, and you know, just having that relationship and being consistent and reliable, um, she gave us that call, you know, and we've been, we've been working with them for almost two years now, consistently. You know, they have us travel all over the place. We get to go to Atlanta a lot, which is really cool out there. Uh, you got Meek Mill and you got Big Sean, you know, getting to work with these guys. And you know, I got to see the world a little bit too. I got to go to Bermuda, which is one of my favorite places I've ever been. Got to work with a buddy of mine, Kevin, a footman cook, who we've, you know, built a relationship through with T.D. Jakes. And, you know, after that, we've gone on other projects. Uh, Carnival Cruise brought us out, and we did a whole, like, tour of different islands, uh, Jamaica, Cayman Islands. Got to really explore and, and make go, awesome Brad. content. Come on, Brad. Let's go. <laughs> got good flavor. It's got great flavor. I went to Iceland with a good friend of mine and we created a film called Gift of Time where I even did the voiceover and I mean it was just an amazing experience and um, I never would have gone if it wasn't for filmmaking. So yeah, I'm about to wrap it up because I will just keep rambling and I said that before and you guys will understand like if, I mean you know, if you love this shit, you can talk about it forever. So I just want to wrap this shit up. Um, you know, I gave you guys a little glimpse on some of the projects that I've done and the companies I've worked with and you know, you can hit me up on social media, you can email me, you can drop a comment, whatever. If you have any questions, whatever, boom, I'm there. Peace out guys.